The publication of the Lindsay Report that chronicled the contamination of blood product administered to the Irish haemophilia community was unequivocal in its denunciation of a critical yet ineffective supply chain that was unable to identify, intercept and recall product infected with HIV and hepatitis C and en route to patients. Part of the problem was that the, at, at a central point we couldn't identify all the products that were out and we couldn't identify where they were. What would have actually resolved the issue for us if we knew exactly what products were so we could do a real-time reconciliation, which we couldn't do. So there were products sitting on, on shelves that were, hadn't been checked, that were infected with hepatitis C and that were infused into patients. Well, the Lindsay Tribunal highlighted a number of deficiencies in the safe delivery of medication to the patients. So, uh, in fact, in what it did was it presented us with a business case uh, from which we worked in order to try and improve the situation. So that was really what the, Lin the effect of the Lindsay Tribunal as far as we're concerned. Armed with this mandate from the Lindsay Tribunal, the National Centre for Hereditary Coagulation Disorders, our NCHCD, set about the creation of a system that not only addressed the inadequacies in the supply chain, but sought to restore the confidence of a very vulnerable patient group and had a number of immediate objectives. The first was to develop a system which would allow us to have real-time recall of products. And we need that for all medicines, in fact, not just clotting factor concentrates, the, to address that particular issue, uh, even though products have become much safer. The second issue was, is, the, is the issue around um, other quality uh, initiatives. And the, we, we essentially need to make sure that the right product is going to the right patient at the right time, as with any other medication. And we know not just from haemophilia, but from medication errors internationally, that that is, a, that is a serious issue with all medicinal products. Focusing first on traditional barcoding methods, the NCHCD realised it needed a producer-to-patient identification system that would provide the means to identify not just each vial in the chain, but where it was exactly located at any point in time. Back in early 2003, we had the chance to meet Barry White for the first time. At that stage, he was preparing a requirement specification for his solution. So once we got face to face with him, we realised that his vision could be realised you know, with our assistance, because we'd done a lot of work on food traceability. So looking at what he was going to do was relatively straightforward, and his vision was so clear, it was, it was just easy to do. But it was the ability of GS1 global standards that facilitate the serialization of each vial as a unique number in the supply chain that was central to the adoption of GS1 in the NCHCD project. Well, first of all, um, Barry always wanted global standards. I mean, he actually could have done the solution based on internal barcoding, but he wanted global because he, he recognised that that was really where it needed to be. So in, in terms of, if you like, identifying the products, identifying the patients and identifying the locations, all of those are using our, our global unique numbers for that purpose. Critical to the design and deployment of the new system was TCP Pharmaceuticals, the medical distributor which became a key lever in the adoption and application of GS1 standards. Pre-GS1, the system had been designed and we'd worked very hard to build in as many safety features as we could so that there were double checks in the process to make sure you'd absolutely got the right patient, the right product, the right strength, the right quantity. But by bringing in GS1 and the scanning, not only were you getting the manual checks, you were also now getting a physical scan. So we built in um, safety checks. So, for example, if... Uh, the warehouse people had picked Benefix 500 instead of Advate 500, immediately the scanner would throw up, wrong product, go again. While the initial phase of the project saw barcodes applied on factor concentrates landed in Ireland by TCP Pharmaceuticals, the extension of the project to Baxter Healthcare saw barcoding provided at source in its Belgian manufacturing facility and the unique requirements of the haemophilia community made the endeavour all the more worthwhile for Baxter. Obviously each patient cohort is different. I, I think what's unique about the, um, the um, patients with haemophilia is that um, they need, when they need their treatment, they need their treatment 
at that particular moment in time. So, so obviously consistency of supply um, to that patient cohort is, is, is absolutely critical. From manufacturer to hospital, scanning now provides the means to identify each specific vial in the supply chain, while GPS technology identifies its location when in transit. And through a combination of both, the NCHCD provides a single view track and trace facility, essential for immediate recall. The GS1 serialization system has also assisted in St. James's Hospital, where automation of the process has streamlined infantry management and administration, reducing the risk of medication error. Before we had barcoding and unique numbers, we obviously it was very much a paper system and Say, for example, every day when we would do stock management, it was very much you had to write down all the barcodes each time. So you could have had three or four different barcodes. You'd have to write the number, the actual barcode itself and the quantity. And then obviously when you went to administer the product, you would have to write the numbers of each product down, the quantity you gave and obviously your signature, etc. So it was open to definitely human error. You know, whereas now that has actually curtailed because everything is scanned and you don't have to worry about somebody interpreting something. But for the haemophiliac community, many of whom self-administer their medication, the supply chain goes beyond the hospital and into their own home. And this represented the last furlong in securing the integrity of supply. Because we now know where everything is, we know exactly what it is and where it is and where it's going, the patients have a lot more confidence in the system. Um, we have also uh, given the patients a mobile phone with, that has a specific app on it which allows the patient to scan the medication just prior to infusion. We are given a card for each child with a barcode, so the details um, comes up on the phone for each child once you scan in the child's card and then you um, scan in the, the, the treatment box has a barcode so you scan in the barcode on the treatment box so when, when you scan it it, it goes uh, directly into the computer system so it's, 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 it's recorded directly straight away so say if um, either of the boys had a serious bleed like a head injury uh, and a scan straight away and you told them it was a head injury, <clears throat> they would be able to um, ring you back and make sure that you get to hospital or you get the proper treatment straight away. Now as well as providing a full track and trace function on all products in the supply chain, other benefits have also accrued and streamlining the delivery of product to the patient has also led to a 5 million euro reduction in infantry levels. Our prime objective was to improve patient safety, but in doing that we have been able to realise significant savings with respect to taking a large amount of medication out of the supply chain, which then has allowed the service to ultimately pay for itself. The uh, genesis of this project was never really financial to make financial savings, but these savings have fallen out of what we have achieved. Mindful of the experience of haemophilia patients, this Belt and Braces approach saw the development and deployment of a comprehensive serialised numbering system, a first for the pharmaceutical industry worldwide and the only response acceptable to providers of the service. Their experience has seen over 100 deaths from contaminated blood products and over 200 people still infected. And that has a massive impact on a small number of families because haemophilia is, is, is concentrated in families because it's an inherited disease. So that in itself is a let, would lead from a patient's perspective to a lot of distrust of the system, a lot of reasonable distrust. And um, I suppose one of the benefits of this and other initiatives uh, and especially with the patient group themselves driving a lot of the development is that they feel more um, empowered within the system and there's, they feel also the service has been developed on the basis of their needs and their particular concerns. So I think it has a big impact. But I think the real benefit is in better clinical management because if the person with haemophilia or the, the parent um, treats the, 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 at home then the information is immediately transmitted to the treatment centre. They can monitor this, they can look and say, oh, this, uh, this person has now taken treatment for, on three occasions for this bleed in their knee. We may need to review that, they may need to see the physiotherapist. Um, they may be under-treating, over-treating, we need to talk to them about this. You can, you can flag and put an alert on certain types of bleeds. So I think the real benefit will be in better clinical management of a person's haemophilia.
it's comfort to know that they are getting the right product and the product is secure and um, it's safe, safe to use and it's recorded and everything is known about the product. So it makes, um, it makes life easier knowing that their boys are, you know, are being um, looked after well and their condition is being managed well. What has been in development for six years has been acclaimed internationally since its deployment and its potential in different pharmaceutical areas and in different geographies is currently under review. We see the project as, as being very successful. Um, it's the first of its kind in the world, as far as we know, to use uh, medication barcoding from manufacturer right through the supply chain to a cold chain distributor to the patient's home. We see this as a template that could be used for any population, uh, any chronic disease population that is required to self-medicate in the home. Ireland is the only country um, that I'm aware that has this um, that this system and, and the benefits that have been derived, derived from that are, are now quite obvious from both from a manufacturer's perspective but also from a patient perspective and, and clearly there are other applications across geographies because uh, you know obviously each market uh, would have the same uh, conditions that we have here so so from that perspective there's there's a lot of opportunity but also for other therapeutic areas and, and, and even for other industries. It certainly has put GS1 on the map in terms of yeah, showing how our standards can help in healthcare. Um, and while this was done for a very small patient group, it has huge potential now across many other applications in the sector. Uh, and of course now with the new regulations from the FDA and the European Union for product safety and patient safety, uh, GS1 standards will be to the fore in addressing those issues.